guys. I got everything set up here. This is actually the very first time of doing a live recording on YouTube in the new studio. I've gotten everything done. I just changed out my lens to a 20 milk lens, so it's a little more zoomed in, but we also got a little bit better picture with the new lens as well. So I'm still working on a lot of the kinks with the new stuff. You've noticed the audio has really taken a huge uh, change since getting in. Um, and I'm really just looking forward to kind of getting more into the groove of doing live streams during the day on YouTube. It's uh, kind of awesome as far as being able to do this not in the middle of the night. <laughs> so I'm really enjoying myself. But for today's, I wanted to kind of play around with Conky. I've seen a lot of people mess around with it. And if you're on like the Unix porn uh, subreddit, you can actually kind of see all the really cool desktops of Linux. Because a lot of times as a Windows user coming to Linux, it is just completely um, ugly. It's like old dated. And when you first come over, you can kind of uh, not realize how much you can customize Linux to make it look really good. And I guess the same can be true for Windows, but I think Windows out of the box just looks a little bit uh, better in most instances and it's just kind of what we're used to at least what I'm used to so For today's stream. I kind of wanted to play around with Conky. I, I haven't ever actually installed it I've just watched a couple of videos and read like the wiki that I have pulled up here And I have a brand new arch install that I did on the twitch stream that some people are actually uh, talking about so I just did my first twitch stream yesterday and that went really well I really love the new setup and being able to hop in here during the day and just get it done one uh, My thoughts come a little bit faster. I'm able to read probably a little bit better uh, Not being so tired and then just kind of get this going But if you guys see any technical difficulties anything like that again, this is my first stream right here on YouTube let me know. I'm just now adjusting all my profiles and scene settings uh, in OBS, so uh, we should have a pretty crisp and clear audio. We should have uh, a lot better as far as uh, all the other stuff. But um, audio, Jordan, actually, uh, I've actually adjusted it, so it should be kind of on the higher end, but it should be compressed, so you shouldn't have any peaks and valleys, and it should be pretty darn clear. Uh, Conky is kind of like rain meter for Windows. So if you're a Windows user, you, ha you might be using rain meter to have like a bunch of metrics on your desktop and or widgets. Uh, you remember back in Vista, you had some widgets, but this is actually kind of on steroids and it just looks way better and a lot sleeker. So it should be pretty fun. I can't believe how awesome it is. Any drop frames, I'm looking right here and I got 0% on my drop frames. Everything's green in OBS, so you guys should be having a good time as far as what you're seeing. Um, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and load up Conky. I haven't even installed it yet, so we're going to do a fresh install of Conky right now. And I'm going to go ahead. Uh, again, this is Arch on Debian, which is my main system in there. Uh, this would be just apt install Conky. So we're going to just start out with just doing a Conky install. And it looks like it's actually already installed. And I'm going to also install, I think, Conky Manager and install that so we can actually get the GUI of Conky. So let's go ahead and launch Conky Manager. Yeah, good to see you guys. I tell you, it's great. Uh, all right, so we got some default settings in Conky right here, uh, and I'm going to go to primary, so get my ugly mug out of there, reduce it so you guys can see a little bit better. And I don't know what any of these are. Let's see what we got on themes, green apple theme. Let's just click and see what we get, and we'll go through. We'll close our terminal. Got a little flip screen here and you can edit a lot of the backgrounds I believe and change the opacity so you can see that's one's from deviant art which is kind of cool and let's see here let's Gotham I like that that's kind of cool gives a little nice little heads up let's see what we can do as far as settings go we'll edit the widget line top right I imagine is where I kind of like it
All right. Go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and maximize my chat here. I'm going to try and keep up with you guys as well. All right. Here we go. So that doesn't look quite right to me. <laughs> Now, I've heard KDE does have some issues with Conky, so we might actually need to change some stuff. We'll see if we can't get this going. All right, still nothing on the opaque. Let's go full transparent, see if we can do that. There we go. A little bit better. Pseudo transparent. Let's see what happens when we do that. No, doesn't do pseudo transparent and semi transparent. Yeah. Not bad. Let's come back to transparent or no semi transparent and then add some opacity and see what we, what happens on that. I like just a little bit of an outline. All right. Yeah, there's Gotham. Good to know. This is my first time actually in here, too. I don't know, Juan. It depends on how this turns out. If this actually turns out to be a pretty good stream, I might just leave it. However, a lot of times I like to come back and when I'm just kind of figuring something out, kind of bounce around a little bit and then get like a really condensed version. I like to make all the YouTube videos really condensed so you can just watch it and it's like a five minute video. So you're not skipping around looking for the perfect part. There's nothing I hate more than playing a YouTube video and then having people waste my time. All right, so I like that, about 10% transparency on that. So this one, I believe, what machine? This is using a Ryzen 2400G, so this is a total budget PC going on here. Um, I think there's like four cores, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, on the 2400G, so let's see what we got here. And we're going to take this one and adjust it as well. Let's go settings and top right. Let's see if it stacks on the top right. Let's hit apply. No, it does not. So we need to align that. Hmm, height padding. I think we could probably add 200 and see if it'll, uh, oh no. That did not work at all. I did not understand what that meant. All right. Yeah, so Conky, the, this is the GUI manager, Conky Dash Manager. Conky itself, it actually runs off a series of text files. I believe from everything I read in the dot com, dot .conky in your home directory. So that's where most of these reside. And I actually can pull that up too, just so you can kind of see it. So... We're in the home, so if we go dot conky, see what it looks like. We're playing with, I believe, one of the GPU settings in here as well. Uh, Gotham is up here, and you can actually get in here and kind of change certain aspects. I believe, let's open up Gotham in, in our editor, and you can kind of see what all the settings are for it. But uh, you can actually change these directly instead of using the GUI. However, why do that when you could just simply change it and kind of mess with it here unless there's a specific setting you're looking for. But that's where all this, what I'm doing, is interacting on the back end of the system, just so you know. That's true. I could just, I, I might do that, Hikari, as far as keeping the sen uh, stream hidden. I might chop it up and just go ahead and create a video out of it. I've done that in the past. I did that with a networking video back in the day. I did about a two hour live stream on, on that. And that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. All right. And then let's do a 10%. And I'd like to bring that down just a hair. Let's see if we can't adjust where it's at. I want to like grab it and drag, but I can't quite do that. Um, And doing like right middle would probably not be good. Middle right. See, but I kind of want to adjust exactly where it's at. So this is where we might need to bust into the config file and change it. I don't see where we can actually change and push this around. 
But Conky is available on any uh, desktop environment, just so you guys know. So if you're on Linux and you really want to make a uh, really sexy looking desktop, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with Conky. And I believe DeviantArt has an entire section dedicated to Conky, which we're going to get into that here in a second. I just want to go ahead and pull up some of this and just kind of get the basics down. So we've got a CPU, we've got our clock up top, and now I want to push this to be just right underneath the actual clock up here. Use the gaps to adjust them. Let's see if we can do that. Um, as far as the gaps go, let's see. I don't see where we got, I guess the horizontal gaps and, but when I apply that a little bit, let's apply that and let's go ahead and put it back in the top right and see if we can adjust the vertical gap then. So we'll do that, apply a little bit to the vertical. Okay, it seems to be working. Not like great, I'd love to just grab it and drag and drop, but gets the job done. So there we go. CPU set up. I don't know if I like that CPU panel. Honestly, I like uh, um, uh, the widget built into um, KDE a little bit better. A simple system timer widget is actually pretty solid. This can look pretty cool. I imagine once we get going on something, we'll launch like a game or something here in a second. And then I probably wouldn't want to see the processes panel, just kind of see what is running in the background. That's always kind of nice to see. So let's go ahead and configure this one as well. Uh, we're gonna go back to transparent. Pseudo transparent on KDE, KDE is not working all that great. So mental note. And then let's go ahead and push this to the bottom right and apply. And our vertical gap or our horizontal gap is all kinds out of whack. So I think we're gonna push this about 20 off from the side. Pretty cool. All right. So kind of dig it. Looks looks kind of cool. Middle right. Let's go middle right. And then we'll go vertical. We'll adjust it. Probably a hundred. I'm feeling a hundred. Nope. That didn't work. Is it going the wrong direction? It's going the wrong direction. So Hikari said, sadly, grabbing Conky won't work as it would break it too often. Someone made a hack for it a long time ago, and let's just say it broke Conky often. So yeah, gra grabbing and doing the drag and drop would be nice, but oh well. We can go negative here. So with that, I think one more should even us out. It looks pretty darn good to me. Let's apply that. Input lag on Linux, KDE, GNOME, GNOME, it makes no difference. Order, I've had this before, and I've honestly gone through the Wikipedia and Lutris. Like last uh, last night on the Twitch stream, if you guys are interested in watching that whole thing, it was a three-hour live stream on Twitch that I did, and it has a VOD, but basically I went through on this new system and just went through and just configured everything as far as taking a whole new system, dropping Vanilla Arch on, and then a minimal version of KDE. So if you look at my apps, I shouldn't have too much. I've already bloated it up a little bit. It's so easy to do, but nothing too crazy. Um, I had some issues with the actual sound coming through to looping to here. It, it kept outputting to, I believe, my digital uh, SPDIF digital output. And I wanted it to go through my line out because my line out goes into my line in of my stream box. And then I take that audio and put it up on the stream here. But uh, I had some issues there. And I ended up installing a bunch of other things. I may make a video about it, but I ended up doing a pulse audio command to force output to the line out because all I could get was my digital out, which kind of sucks, but. All right. Hey, Ted, how's it going? Just saw you jumped in chat there. 
I had a 1060. I had, I had a couple 1060s, and then I got rid of them. I went full Linux and then got went all AMD, and then I realized, oh crap, I should have kept one of my NVIDIA cards because the NVIDIA cards, uh, I a lot of people have issues with them on Linux, and you know, I would love to have those issues so I could explain them to you or at least fix them and kind of make a tutorial video. So I need to get my hands on an NVIDIA card. It's just, I can't drop that kind of money right now. The new NVIDIA cards are stupid expensive. So I'm just like, ah. Uh. But I'll, I'll eventually get one and get NVIDIA roped in to a lot of my tutorial videos because a lot of people have issues with uh, NVIDIA just integrating a lot of the, the drivers. So out of the default stuff we see here, I think we got pretty much everything that we want. But let's get on Deviant Art as this looks cool, I guess. I mean, it looks good. It's not not bad. Looks all right. But it's not like, oh my god, this is totally awesome. I wouldn't submit this to, you know, any any kind of website. It it's just okay. So let's go ahead and pull up Deviant Art. And DeviantArt has a whole section, apparently, of Conky. Oh, God. Hopefully, I don't get in trouble looking on DeviantArt on YouTube. All right. So, we got Conky pulled up. And here's some of the stuff that people do. And this is where a lot of the desktop environments that you see online that are way prettier than anything you've ever seen, whether it be Windows, whether it be Mac, whether it be Linux, these are all running Conky. And you can kind of see all the cool stuff you can do. I've also seen visualizers for when you're playing music through it. You can actually see a lot of the, the sound waves of the music. So you can do a lot of cool interaction uh, with that. So that's pretty darn cool. And you can actually, let's see. Let's read a little bit here and see if I can't get this. Now, if it says you have to run a script or anything like that, be very careful about doing add-on scripts and other things to modify your graphic user interface. I have a video coming out, I think tomorrow, over a virus that just came out, and it's about a, a GNOME virus. It's actually called Evil GNOME, and it is infects Linux machines. It's targeted for people running Linux, GNOME desktop environments, and it is absolutely a brutal, brutal virus. Um, one that I definitely caution people about just running any old script. It probably was grabbed off of a site like DeviantArt. Uh, so definitely watch out for third-party scripts from websites. Very, very, very important. You can still get infected if you do silly things like running scripts from a website like this. Um, so definitely be careful. But let's see here. I, I'm not seeing anything on that one. Let's. I like this one. I like. I like the blue. See, this is kind of cool. It'd be neat to have a calendar on your desktop. Complete funny blue conky for your system. Um. I wonder. Let's let's see what a download looks like for this. So this is a script. Let's let's pull this in. I'm curious to see what all this script does. So let's uh, let's extract it here. Go into our downloads. Um, balloon Conky. Now, let's... Uh, any script I download from the web... Okay, so it's running RC0 and RC1 of Conky in here. Okay. It's nothing big out of that. What is in these scripts, I wonder? <laughs> uh, Ted, God, good, think I hate GNOME. Uh, I don't think I hate GNOME, I do hate GNOME. I'm not a GNOME fan, I've never been. I load it up and I'm just like, nope. It has like the worst workflow for me and I get why people like it, but as a long time Windows user come to Linux, it just feels super weird. Um, all right, I just was looking through here. Nothing crazy that jumps out at me on this script. Um, 
I'm just looking at all the files after downloading just to make sure it's not doing anything crazy. So, okay, this is good. Let's go to RC1 and see what we get. And total run times, all right, background, buffer, max size, width. All this looks pretty cool. I would just be looking for any kind of calls to like a website or something like that uh, when going through these. So that's that's what I'm looking for now, guys, when, when I'm pulling these up. And we're going to look at the Lua scripts as well. And Lua is pretty uh, easy to understand. If you've done any kind of CSS or anything like that in the past, you'll look at Lua and go, oh, okay, this makes perfect sense. But this is supposed to be the clock widget. I'm just looking through. Nothing bad here. And then the clock two widget. I don't know why there's two of them. But let's go ahead and take a peek over this one, too. All right. Correct with your path. Hmm. Probably going to have to fix that. <laughs> DT jumped in. You guys are crazy. Gnome is amazing. Man, DT is trolling us. Where's, where's the ban button? How do you how do you ban somebody? <laughs> uh, uh, one's analog, one's digital. Okay. Yeah, this looks good. So let's go ahead and run this guy. I think uh, we'll do the read me. Always always read the instruction manuals, right? No nobody ever doesn't do that. Everyone always follows instructions. All right, let's see. Current mod by me. Cocky music is generated by Exile Music Player. I need to actually, I've never used that music player. I'll actually have to try it out. Sounds cool though. All right, configurable, but you need to correct the line in the RC file. Okay. Probably a little bit of setup here. I'm just gonna throw it in and see what happens. But, all right, so from here, I'm going to see if uh, we can just throw this in the dot conky path. So we'll go to home and go dot conky based on this script. And kind of cool if they actually made more modular. I would, I would prefer a more modular one. Let's see what this one does. I'm just looking to see if maybe we can create a folder in here and then interface it in with the actual. Yeah. I don't know. Something's telling me this ain't going to work quite right. I'm going to just drop this file over here. We're going to move that. Balloon conky. And then we're going to change the, the startup. Well, to balloon conky forward slash conky rc0. Just like that. And then we'll go ahead and make this runnable or executable. It's not already, it is. Thanks, Ted. I'm, I'm still working on a little bit. I finally replaced this light up here. It was driving me crazy. It was turning me into like a Simpson character. I was turning like yellow and red. Ugh, so I just completely ripped the fixture down. I was like, screw it. And then I got some RGB in the back. 
to get a little bit of offshoot light. And then I switched out my camera a little bit. So now I'm gonna be a little zoomed in, but I think I've already recorded a couple videos using the old kit lens that has uh, 11 mils to 22. So uh, a little bit more zoomed out from what I'm at now. So it'll be kind of a cool, cool setup. So, all right. Actually, you know what? I haven't I, I haven't used Dolphin that much, and I think it's like uh, Control. What is it? Open terminal here. I think it was Control F4 or F2. Damn it! Dolphin. Open terminal. Shift F4. Oh, so close. So used to Nautilus. All right. Shift F4 opens the console. And then we can just go start up. What does this do exactly? Does it do anything? I don't know what I'm expecting here. <laughs> uh, that was extremely underwhelming. Probably need to kill the existing conky that is running. All right. Uh, right now I'm using a Canon M50 gunner. Um, I really like the M50. It's really basic. I'm not a uh, film. I don't know much about film filmography at all. When I first started YouTube, I knew absolutely nothing about cameras. I was using a C920 and had like the top down look. It was like the worst recording ever. Um, and then I initially had a headset that I recorded on that also sounded equally as crappy and I immediately went to a Blue Yeti, and uh, the audio quality got a lot better. But it wasn't no, it wasn't until like probably three or four months in before my video actually got somewhat presentable. <laughs> and it still has long work to do. I still have a lot of stuff I need to learn. Hmm. All right. I'm not gonna mess too much around with that one. Let's go ahead and pull up Deviant Art one more time. Deviant art. Hopefully nothing bad in my search history that popped up there. Um, and then go conky. Let's see if we can get a, a better, like, that's kind of cool. I want more of a modular conky thing where you can just grab a certain thing. Like, this is kind of neat, and I'm going to see. Let's download it and see what it looks like. See, this is more my speed so it gives you the conky.rc and the fonts that it's using i need to figure out what to do with this right here <laughs> he's actually the real chris from family guy damn it beer <laughs> you got me Oh, Conky Manager is not maintained during the last years. Bert, I did not know that. So I guess you need to use uh, .conf. I, I mean, I'm sure it just edits the .conf, so it's fine. But still. Ask Chris why he does not use Ubuntu-based distributions. Ubuntu's the devil, Jennifer. It's the devil. Although a lot of people have roasted me on Twitter about that. Oh, man. I have plenty of bad DMs there. Open box is the gold standard. I need to look up what open box is, DT. Yeah, I haven't done 4K yet, Gunner. I've actually been working on just getting a lot of the regular stuff going. Uh, 1080p at 30 frames. I know everybody's gonna say go 60, but right now I'm just getting all the 30 frames set in place. I eventually will make the leap to 60. I just haven't yet. I don't move around enough really to make it worthwhile. Now, if I was doing like heavy gaming or something like that, obviously 60 frames would be what I'd be using, but right now 30 is kind of what I'm going for. All right. Hikari Conky dash C path to Conky RC to use. Ah, that's good to know. So let's look. I'm I'm curious. I'm gonna pull up the file manager again. We're gonna go to dot uh conky in our home directory again. 
And this is kind of where everything starts. And I think it runs this startup file. Okay, so when I enabled Gotham, I enabled CPU panel, and I enabled this one, it went ahead and launched exactly what Hikari linked in chat there. So like, let's say there's certain other things I wanted to add on here. I could just modify this and push it to that RC file. So that's how Conky works. That's a good, good tip. So we could easily just add this guy in the background. Let's uh, go to our downloads again. Let's try just doing one of them. So here's the Conky RC file. And as far as the font, I think you need to install this font is what they, they're asking. So let's extract all this to, what's it, does it have a root folder? Yeah, it has a root folder. We'll just put this in our downloads. All right, Conky here, I think. We're gonna go the Windows approach here and just open it up in the GUI and manually install each one of these. Let's see if it allows me. Install, the big blue install button helps. All right, close that. Install, personal, all right. And we'll get all that going. Probably should have done this at the system level now that I think about it, but whatever. Ben Fitzpatrick. Chris, I paired an Xbox One controller to my Linux laptop via Bluetooth. It keeps disconnect disconnecting. What should I do? I don't have the money for a better controller currently. Oh, Ben, you're not going to like my answer. So I have an Xbox One controller as well. I have the older version with an actual uh, dongle because when Xbox One first came out, it wasn't necessarily Bluetooth based or at least not uh, the official Bluetooth and you needed a separate dongle. That doesn't work at all wireless. And the newer versions apparently kind of work on Bluetooth. However, you have to really mess with them. There's a lot of posts on the forums about getting them uh solid but uh at the end of the day it's a big headache i know it is i wish it wasn't but it is and i completely gave up on my xbox one controller and if i'm going to use an xbox one controller i just plug it in via usb and a micro uh usb cable on the end of it and call it a day however if you don't want to go with the wired approach you can just use an Xbox 360 controller. Now the Xbox 360s, I have a little wireless adapter and I have a ton of those old controllers. Buy them up. I mean, I bought up a ton on Amazon for like 20 or 30 bucks and they're still one of my favorite controllers. So I'm rocking Xbox 360s for most of my Lynx gaming um, or the Steam controller. I really love the Steam controller. However, I know it's a little finicky when you're outside of Steam. There's certain games that don't play nice so much with the Steam controller outside of Steam. So that's my controller advice it's not the best i wish i had a better answer for you ever tried rain meter gordon i tried the hell out of rain meter in windows man i used it like crazy um and it works good man i i always liked uh i always liked rain meter i think it's dot conky nope what was that folder we were in it was shift f4 do a long listing here. It didn't extract it? Come on now. I swear it extracted it. The extraction. No, it didn't. Thanks, Theo, man. I appreciate it. Still got a ways to go on the studio, but I, I'm almost there. I've almost like stopped messing with it. I might put up like a shelf right over here or right over here. I don't know. We'll see. I might just leave it. I kind of like the sterile look. My wife was looking at it, she's like, you know, this looks pretty darn good. I think you should leave it, but I always like to tinker. Usually, usually when I should just stop. Uh, let's see here. You ever mess with the SC controller? Um, not so much with the SC controller, Loom Key. Uh, let's see. DualShock 4s work great. They do. 
I used to have a, a whole bunch of them, but I, I actually, no, I still have two. My son would probably kill me if I took his PS4 controllers, though. <laughs> oh. Typical American. He should, says, A-series AMD APUs are terrible for gaming, unless you have Ryzen Vega graphics, I suppose. And I'm going to agree. I had an A-series, an A10, actually, so not even a slouch on the A-series. An actually decent A-series integrated graphics. And it sucked. It was horrible. I even put 16 gigs of memory in there, and it still was just dogging in performance. So even though I'm kind of an AMD fanboy now almost, because almost all my crap's AMD, I still think those A-series were trash. <laughs> I really don't ever buy the A-series. If it's on sale for 50 bucks, don't buy it. Just, just get another 50 bucks and buy something better. Because, yeah, the Ryzen 2400s are decent integrated uh, uh, APUs, but the A-series were garbage and still are garbage. I think they still sell them, too. Uh, will you post this on YouTube? Um, I actually have uh, this this one right here. I probably will actually cut this up a bit and make an actual tutorial over Conkey. I just kind of want to do a live stream as, as I figure out Conkey. It's kind of hard to think and, and figure out exactly how it, how it works, but um, yeah, I'll make a video about it. I don't know if it's going to be this one, though, is going to be the thing. Let's see here. I actually want to extract this to... We're gonna put this in our home folder and we're gonna make a new folder and call this DNA. I think, uh, what is that? It looks like, a, not DNA strand, but it's like a molecule. <laughs> what, did they, what did he name this? Oh, this guy didn't even come up with a cool name. Looks cool. LSD, I think is what the, the PNG file is. Theo, my four-year-old laptop has an A-series AMD. Sorry, man. S sorry about your loss. Not, not playing many games on that bad boy. Oh, yeah. Going back to Conky. All right, so we're going... Conky. And we're going to do a new folder. Let's see if we can't create our own little... Uh, patch and conky, but I kind of want to keep with the standard default setup here. I will call this one LSD. And we're going to drop the RC file into here. Or extract it, extract to, and let's go ahead and pull this folder in. Oh, come on. Come on, Dolphin. Agree with me. It's always it's always a constant fight. Still did not uh, not drop that file in there. Oh hell with it. Shift F four. Let's do a listing. Did it not? Okay, it did. It put it in there. It's just weird. It added a directory. Oops. Uh, all right. So we got our directory out. We got our RC file in there. We now have our PNG file in there. And if we do a cat and look at our .conf uh, conky RC file, this is everything it's doing. And by the look of this, this is not right. I see like this person put home Charlie, which is not a directory. So let's go ahead and edit this in a graphic editor. And we're going to go .conky RC. And we're going to take a look at the defaults here. Um, looking for any paths. And right here where it says image home, this actually should be Titus.conky 
and LSD forward slash. So that should fix up our file. And from here, we're good. We've installed the special fonts already on the system. So let's go back to our Conky directory, go into Conky startup, pull up the Kate, uh, which I think I actually had it open already. So now if I'm reading this right, we can go just to take a peek at how this works. Process panel dot conky. Okay. So I want to change this LSD one to be a little bit different from how we downloaded it just because I don't like that file being hidden. So we're going to come back in the terminal, do a long listing, and we're going to move conky RC to say LSD. That way it shows up. So that should be about the same format as the other ones in here. See how it shows that and then the JPEG. So if we come back here, LSD, LSD. So we should be able to close this out. Or go ahead and copy this format, paste it in. And we're gonna just go ahead and change the CD to be LSD. And we'll go ahead and change this to be LSD and then LSD. So LSD directory, L I shouldn't have named everything LSD. I swear, geez. Blah. That was a horrible naming scheme. What was I thinking? But anyways, you guys might have picked up on that. I tell you. <laughs> uh, so with this, let's go ahead and close out. And we're going to go ahead and run the conky startup again and let's see what happens so this was completely using just that so let's go ahead and from here we're going to launch into terminal once again we're just going to run conky startup uh come on conky conky dash startup all right, dot forward slash conky startup. Am I not in the right directory here? Startup dot sh. Ah, <laughs> what a noob. Didn't add the executable <laughs> permissions. All right, now let's try conky startup. And did that give us anything? negative I do not see any new stuff let's go ahead and pull up conky manager and see if the, our new package actually pulls up into there that'd be kind of cool but I probably screwed something up all right ah there it is all right so Let's take that guy, go to settings, top left, apply, transparency, semi-transparent, little bit of opacity, background color. Come on, am I transparent? Nope, transparent. No, still not, still not liking me. I don't think that file that was a PNG, was it not? All right. Yeah, that's definitely a PNG file. So it did not do any transparency with it though. Pseudo transparent. Hmm. Let's go white. See what happens. Not gonna end well. All right. Okay. 
has to be a way to add transparency here is killing me. I think there's something in the configuration file that we need to look at because this does not look right. So open theme folder, open this up. Let's take a look at uh, the actual transparency settings in here. Maybe it's not able to save the transparency is my thing. At least that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, Jess, Jess says that uh, KDE doesn't work well with Conky. And I've read a lot of things to say the exact same thing oh, that Jess is uh, saying. So we'll see. I like to try stuff that supposedly doesn't work just to see how it does. And it definitely looks like it doesn't work that well. <laughs> But I definitely would say Conky is a very rough editor. I think with enough hacking around, you can definitely make it look very, very nice. But it definitely takes a lot of work. I don't see anything in here that looks necessarily bad. Just nothing that necessarily looks good either. <laughs> um... Have transparency, yes, here. Alignment, top left. So what we can do is take one thing that does work. Let's go to Gotham, which looks pretty decent. Let's open its folder. Maybe. Don't die on me, computer. Just loaded you up. All right. So we're going to go full screen, split a vertical. So we got Gotham over here. We're gonna, oh no, why did I do that? Open Gotham back up. All right, so we got Gotham over here. We got LSD on the right. Let's compare the two, see if I can't figure out why Gotham or why LSD is not working right. From the look of it, Gotham has a lot less options, which is good. Um, runtime, interval, window class. Uh, let's see, one window class, is that even a thing over on Gotham? It's not. One window, yes. Window type, desktop. This one says normal. I think let's go ahead and put normal says window transparent no window hints I don't really care about window color zero 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 let's put a little space between the one windows um all right here's this I'm gonna go ahead and pull all these in the person that did this I don't think really aligned a lot of the terminology together. I hate it when they kind of spread out things out of its own thing. Um, almost like everything should be grouped certain ways. So I'm just trying to match this other one as close as I can. One window color, let's go ahead and do six zeros. And as far as the rest of this, let's go ahead and change ARGB to yes, match over here. All right, what do we got now? Oh, uh, look at that, already affected. Okay, that was ridiculous. That was just plain ridiculous, what the hell? Um. Also, that was kind of weird with the window manager. KWIN. KDE and KWIN. Um, that was a little strange. But it's kind of a cool little deal. We got it going using the Conky manager. and It's a bit hacky, though. Um, so it depends on how the person wrote their .config file. Obviously, I just kind of took an existing working one. 
set the other one side by side, kind of went through line by line, to see how to get that one over here. It's a way to do it. It's not something I would make a tutorial on YouTube about because, Lord, the comments alone, I think I just get completely roasted going, what the hell? That That's a little too complex, I think. Not too bad, though. I guess it's not too bad. Um, I do like this setup, though. It's kind of cool. HD used, 41 hard drive. That's neat. CPU 1, CPU 2. Other than that, I got more than two CPUs. Still neat, I guess. A little temperature setting. Charlie. That that really shouldn't say Charlie, actually. Let's let's fix it so it says something else. Uh Ah, Hikari said, can't really blame the maker because they probably made it in a non-KDE environment and it probably worked there. Probably true. Because Jess already did say it's a little more of a setup with KDE because KDE does not like certain things, which is true. Because when I started this, as you guys remember, um, when I just hit transparent, transparent didn't work for anything in in kde and then i changed the con key from that to i think semi-transparent or kind of transparent and then it, it worked just fine so you guys are definitely right you know it might be easier instead of just uh calling me chris you guys can can call me charlie from now on then going back in here and changing this dot config file just call me charlie <laughs> All right, let's pull it back up. Let's remove our split. Oh, no, no, no. I really need to learn more. Close current view. Close that. Let's open it again. All right, let's find Charlie. And we'll put Titus. Oh, yay, look, it changed the name. I'm so special. <laughs> All right, let's go download some stuff. Charlie Titus Tech. I don't know, it's, it's not too bad. Look out for Charlie. All right, so that's one. Let's go grab something else. It's going to look like a giant throw up all over my desktop, but whatever it's kind of fun what else should we grab here oh this one looks kind of cool look at this a little conky conky little launch pad i like the little uh resources that's neat got your system over here ivan set it up got uptime i i dig it up time what type of machine oh dude he's running 686 what Oh my god, 32 bit. Um file system, that's neat, especially if you're separating out your home and root and all that. That's pretty neat. I dig that. Network. Uh public and local IPs. Receiving, total receiving, sending, total sent, units. That's a neat little deal. How to use Conky Launchpad is the Conky config file. It loads all the images inside a dot con Conky RC folder. Uh, copy the dot Conky RC folder to your home directory. Optimize for a 1366 display resolution. Holy crap. That's a small resolution, man. Poor guy. I feel bad for him. Couldn't imagine working on that. <laughs> uh, people's first jump into Conky is either simple or throw up on their desktop. So nothing new. It's true. This is a neat setup. I'd probably load it, but I don't want my public IP showing up all over YouTube. So let's look at some other ones too. Look at this one. This is kind of cool. Across the entire desktop. At like a 45 degree angle. Honky Night Drive. 
Again, pretty cool. I need to probably load into some uh, some stuff there. That's still pretty neat. I dig the updates in the middle. Looks like it has an NVIDIA plugin. So you probably pulls like NVIDIA SMI and grabs your current uh, current speed and also temperature. That's that's really neat. I think we can probably do that one. I don't have an NVIDIA card, so we're going to have to probably modify some stuff. But I think that'd be a fun one to try. Go ahead and download this guy. Yeah, how old is this one? I guess I should be checking to see what was the last time they updated. Uh, it looks pretty... Oh, okay, one second. One of the best conky themes I've ever seen. I believe that due to the amount of time that has been done, it is bugged in current distros. Oh, it says it doesn't work. Let's try to make it work. Let's see what happens. That'd be fun. Oh, let's extract. Track to downloads. All right. I like using broken stuff. Oh, Rock M SMI. You know, I haven't used any of the Rock M SMI stuff. I need to. Actually, uh, really interested in it. Because AMD's uh, displays are just so hideous. Like, I think I found one on GitHub for my Vega card inside. And I remember looking at trying to pull in all the specs from that GPU and. I can never make it look good. I got a, uh, something running in terminal on some of my benchmarks. I think when I did my uh, Devil May Cry, not not the new one, number five, but when the old Devil May Cry, and I did that on Linux, and I did a lot of the playthrough, I think actually I had that going in the background, and I just did a Windows snip of it and pasted it at the top uh, for the gameplay. It was, worked, but it was not pretty. <laughs> Was not pretty at all. Rock M dash SMI. Yeah, I'll definitely look that up, Hikari. All right, so we went go to downloads, Conky. Uh, we can delete this one actually. It probably put it as dot Conky. Yeah. Night Drive. All right, so we'll cut this. I'm gonna put this back in our home directory. Not conky. I should use tabs. I know I should use tabs before anybody says anything. But I'm just getting used to Dolphin. I'm forcing my use to self to use Dolphin just because I use Nautilus way too much. All right, so we got Night Drive in here. Let's see what happens when I try to pull it in using the manager. Conky manager. Why do I keep closing it? Next up on Chris Titus Tech, how to use workspaces. So you don't keep closing everything and reopening it in front of everybody on a live stream. Um, let's see. Night drive. Click that. Seemed like it did something. But do not see it anywhere. Let's go ahead and hit settings. Let's go middle middle, see what happens if it pops up anywhere. And apply. Go zero zero for the vertical gap. See if we can't get it somewhere on our screen. Nothing. Whole bunch of nothing. Now, to be expected, this one did say it was broken. So let's go pick. Transparent. Close. All right, so there it is. It looks pretty, but not yet. Let's go into settings and we're going to go ahead and push this one to the middle top. Top middle, apply. 
And then we make this thing bigger. Let's see if we can't stretch this bad boy. Oh, let's go 1900 on this one. Yeah, no, it's not stretching. Thunar works too. Yeah, I, I've used Thunar as well. But nothing ever grabs me quite like Nautilus. <laughs> it's horrible. And I hate Gnome, so I mean, it's kind of funny. It's uh, GTK based, so, you know. My own bad. All right. Let's see on the size. Minimum height. Location. Network. All right, so we've got it kind of placed. Now we got to do our little hack to get around it, I think. So let's go ahead and pull in Conky RC. Let's see what other scripts it has. Kind of cool. Look at all those uh, little files. Little Python file, too. Images, icons, cover, font. Ooh. You know what? We didn't even install the font. That's my own bad on that one. Um, No install command there. Come on. I don't know if I can actually... I Oh, it might already be installed. Digital readout, thick upgrade. That's probably what it's telling me. Uh, Arch logo. No, actually, this system is my new studio rig. So this is actually an Arch system. I went ahead and put it in just because. Just, just to be completely different. So out here I'm using Arch, inside I'm using Debian. <laughs> oh man. I have not played around with Slim Login Manager. I really like, the one thing about Arch is it's so darn simple. Like you can install anything so darn easily that that's kind of why I really like it, which is, is kind of bad, but also, you know, to be expected. Open recent, let's go Gotham. Let's split these and do our comparison. Got this and let's take a look. Let's fix up our windows first. One window, yes, window type. We're gonna go normal, uh, transparent, no, hints, yeah. And then we got one window color and some other options. Let's see if it's somewhere else in this document. So let's flip through. I don't see it. So let's go ahead and add that. Close that. Um, that looked like that helped a little. Although now it looks a little off. <laughs> Just a hair off. <laughs> um, let's close that. Holy hell. Studio Arch. All right. I have totally messed this up. Hacking around. Hmm. Yeah, so let's go back to our config file. Let's see what else we got in here. I think the window override and then taking the one window color, I think that uh, window override is needed. It's doing, this, this script is doing something a little bit more than the, the average thing, so. I don't think this is gonna work. But it's worth messing around with. 
Let's go ahead and change it to pseudo transparent. Wow. That's really transparent. <laughs> uh, no. All right. We're going to ditch this one. We're giving up. Goodbye, Night Drive. You looked kind of cool on Deviant Drive, but uh, yeah. We're giving up on that one. Ooh, look at this. The Arch Rings. That looks cool. I'm using Arch Linux, so... Hey. Let's do it. Let's just keep adding stuff until it just all overlaps on my desktop. That's the PNG. Oh, it's a script. Oh, they put it on Mega. God, how old is this? I about to say that was Mega Upload. I think Mega actually changed its name several years back. Is this the link that wasn't seized by the U.S. government? <laughs> yeah, okay, so uh, this one's not going to work. It, it was literally uploaded, lordy, back in 2011. All right, so Conky is really old. And a lot of the stuff on DeviantArt is also really old. This was submitted January 7th, 2011. Probably should look this up before downloading. Pro tip that I just learned. Uh, Sword. This is actually the Arch install that I just did last night on my Twitch stream. So we did a Twitch stream for, oh God, what was it? Three hours or something yesterday during the day. And I did a full, this is a whole new computer specifically for the studio, uh, just for live streams and tutorial videos. And I made it Arch instead of what it is, so. All right, let's flip through here. One last theme and then I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it a day. Let's see if we can't find something that is a little bit better than what we got. Um, Let's see, something really kind of, oh, look at this. Side card conky. This looks neat. I think let's do something a little fun and install this one. This is a different style than what we got on the desktop. Let's see when it was submitted. All right, November 2015. This one's only about four years old. So this might work. Roboto, Roberto or a Roboto Lite. Um, I think I already have those fonts installed, so that's good. I think we can just go ahead and download this guy. Let's give it a whirl. Conky RC template. All right, cool. Let's extract. All right, Night Drive, you are going in the trash, buddy. Sorry about you. And then let's go ahead, go to downloads, open a new tab. Look, I didn't close the tab this time, guys. Getting there. Um, side card. So I think from here we can just go and do side card. Cut this out. We'll open up the README file. We can do that. Simple, blah, 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 blah. Place in home folder, blah, blah. Okay, yep. Yeah. Sounds good. We're ready to roll. We'll cut this guy, bring it back to our Conky folder, paste it into here. And with side card loaded, we can launch our Conky manager one last time. That is completely depreciated. Thanks for letting me know that, guys. And where's old side card? Did it even make it up in here? It did not. Oh hell. SP oh there's no there's no files in here. Did I 
Did I? I completely spaced, didn't I? Oh, I didn't get the file. Okay, I kind of need the files. Dur -dur -dur. All right, let's move. Let's move our files over here. Ah, come on, give, give me the address. Give me the address. All right, we'll move star to here. All right, and we'll close this just because I don't feel like launching it again. <laughs> laziness and did it oh it didn't it didn't grab the dot file did it oh really no it didn't one more time guys one more time all right move dot conky rc star to side card Hello. All right, we got it now. We are ready. Took long enough. All right, uh, cancel. We'll go ahead and minimize that guy. Might need to open this up, we'll see. And... Did it pull it in here? I bet I can refresh this. Search for new themes. Hmm. We'll relaunch one last time. Why do you hate me so much, Sidecard? It's because I told everybody that this is going to be the last one. All right, let's go Nano. Let's move this to move dot conky RC to side card. And then move dot conky RC background to conky. We'll put it side card. We're going to have to do some edits here, but I want it to actually be in the folder to where I can just browse it. Hate it when crap's hidden. All right. So side card's ready to go. Let's pull it back up and let's edit our side card to be properly done. This looks way different than the other ones. Image is gonna be side card. Background, this almost looks like a Lua file actually. So we changed that file. Everything else looks fine, but again, this isn't your trip, typical conky.rc file, so I don't think that's gonna work. I think there's some other stuff that needs to be done, but we'll see. That just seems like the formatting just seems wacky to me. But it could be like old school conky formatting as well. So let's refresh. Still nothing there. All right, we're going to have to. I'm, I'm not giving up on sidecar. We're going to go ahead and pull in Gotham again and take a look to see if we can't edit the sidecar config to just go ahead and pull in all the crap that we need. It's probably not going to work. But, hey. Yeah, this looks completely like a Lua file. But there's no other configuration file in the Conky setup. When I downloaded this thing, I mean, there's nothing, nothing left. And if we look at the... Where is it? Where are you at? Sidecore zip. You see that it's just literally... The conky rc file the background 
And then under templates, you just have the S SVG files. That's the only thing in here. So there has to be some type of config file for Conky to work. Can't just straight up read the Lua file from my understanding at least. Um, let's see. As far as Vim goes, DT, actually, uh, we did a Vim tutorial on the Twitch stream yesterday, so <laughs> that was kind of fun because I haven't ever used Vim that much. Just enough to get in and then hit Shift ZZ to get out, save and quit, do export editor equals nano. But it was it was neat. It was neat learning a lot of the stuff on Vim yesterday. Still not like my go-to, but I totally can see how people could really use it for a lot of the power uh, power user tool tips, like uh, skipping ahead to kill two words, those types of things, using just three letters. That's pretty powerful. I think the RC file is written as Lua file that generates the config on the fly, just the manager can't read it. Ah. All right. Yeah, I mean, as far as the whole Linux community and things, it's gotten pretty good. And honestly, guys, uh, I think a lot of people pick on Linux for this, but the Windows community is just as toxic. I mean, let's be real here. How many times has a Windows user walked into a forum and asked a silly question that pretty much everyone in that forum knew, but nobody took the time to actually give a thoughtful response? It's just human nature. It's not so much a Linux thing. It used to be a Linux thing. Linux used to be a lot more hardcore in this respect, but anymore, that's a bunch of... BS. It's just not a thing anymore. You don't really have to worry uh, so much about that. Yes, people get snarky comments and questions back, but no more than the average thing, no matter what operating system it is. Uh, Windows, I, I know, can be just as bad. So I'm just saying. All right, so instead of making this conky file, which let's preview this readme actually. Lua based on Conky script, needed font, edit alignment, place RC from the zip file in the home folder, run Conky from launcher or terminal. Let's see if we need to edit anything because I did change the directories and stuff. Based on everything here, I think we're good. Let's see what happens if we take terminal from right here in sidecar. Let's do a listing and let's go conky dash C sidecar. Okay, unable to load image. Let's cancel that. Let's take a look here at the image sidecar background. Instead of doing this, let's give the complete path name, which if we look in sidecar, where, where, where did I put sidecar? I think we need to go back. We need to go all the way back. Uh, conky forward slash sidecar. And from here, that's the sidecar we're looking for. Looks kind of pretty. Its own way. Sidecar background, sidecar dash background. So this is correct, however, let's give it the complete path name. Titus.conky dash sidecar. Let's save that. Let's rerun. Unable to load image. Well, well then. 
Why didn't you like that? I bet it's some silly typing mistake that I've made. It always is. Always is. <laughs> um, did not like that. Now I did change it from the original. If we look back, I did modify. Let's see if I can go back enough. I don't think I can. No. It doesn't have enough on the clipboard history. But that's all right. We still have the zip file. Ah, oh, come on. See, this is why I hate Dolphin. One click open. I know I can change it in settings. I did a tutorial video on it. But still. All right, extract that. Do downloads. And then we're gonna look in terminal for our file. And we'll move dot conky RC dot background to where are we at? Home dot conky. Oh, home Titus dot conky. So that'll move the background there. And then we'll also move. Oh hell, let's just let's just leave it like that. See what happens. And move dot conky RC to home Vitus dot conky sidecar. All right. We put that in sidecar, that is all good. Probably we'll need to change some stuff here, but I'm curious what happens. Go see sidecar. Oh, ah. Do. Dot conky RC. Okay. Move back to dot conky background to here. All right. This, this folder is such a mess. <laughs> oh, Lordy. All right. All right, cool. It grabbed it this time. I don't know what I did, but. I messed up the other one. Let's see if it pulled it in properly. Maybe. Aha. It looks horrible, but it's there. All right. Well, let's make it look pretty now, I guess. Open recent Gotham. Let's see what I did over here. I bet we can change it. Even though this Lua format, it looks like it reads and runs the same way. I think we can easily do that. Oh, sidecar instead of side card. Ah. Damn, man. I did all that just for that. It's always It's always that. It's always like one letter off. I do it and then I'll like sit there and go round and round for like five minutes and then go, oh, I forgot a period. Or I forgot a D. Ugh, figures. Um let's go ahead and change this to fix our issue. RGB, one window color. I think we can change that to zeros. And Transparent one window underscore transparent equals false. 
one window true okay desktop normal what else we got what else we got in here i'm missing something alignment's good draw borders false yeah, this is a little ridiculous for Conky. I got to say, I'm not a fan. I can totally see how you can make something look beautiful. But the amount of tinkering in this config file is not something that I'm like, hey, I need to tell everyone about Conky. There's got to be something better. Uh, there's just got to be something better. Fun fact with Conky is that the settings you can you change to fix the conky widgets for Kwin will break the widget, usually the same way on other DEs. Uh, all right. Yeah. Conky is no bueno, but hey. It almost looks like this is commented out with the dash dash. But I'm going to look for any other things here. Got color, visual, value. Transparent is now false. Window type is normal. One window type is desktop here. I think desktop causes a problem. I think that's the one. That's the KDE thing. Because most people say you can't really do KDE properly. Um, class, type, normal, one window. All right. So with this, let's cancel that. Launch it again. Let's see what it looks like. It looks exactly the same. Oh my word. With that, I am done. I am done. We're gonna hang it up right here. This was conky. I gotta say, past the stock widgets, it was not a pleasure. <laughs> it was like a, uh, not a fun thing to mess with. A lot of the widgets, one, were either super old, they were all formatted differently. Um, it can be cool, but you're definitely gonna have to hack around in it, is my initial impressions. Uh... And, and honestly, that may be a slight at Conky, but really when it comes to like rain meter on Windows, the same crap. It's gone through various versions and their config files for it uh, definitely go the whole gamut. So, yeah, I mean, Conky, it, Hikari put it up, and that's the best way I can say it. Conky is a mess but it's a cool mess like you can hack around you can get a whole bunch of stuff working going on it and stuff but looking at how everyone makes stuff for it everyone makes it completely different the syntax can be completely different like that last one i pulled up the side card it had a lua file instead of a traditional config file so the depreciated graphic user interface manager i was using uh, didn't see the new one because it was based on Lua. So you'd have to run that from terminal using a script um, in the background on top of what you're doing over here or changing the startup script of Conky to integrate with that uh, because it uses Lua and then change everything. Man, that whole just last paragraph I just went through is a mess. But at the same time, you can make some really cool stuff. Like, this is cool. It's really neat. But at the same time, I, I understand it's not for everybody. And it is a hacky solution. Very, very hacky. I'll see what I can do to clean this up and see if I can't make it for everyone to just kind of get in there and maybe make a tutorial video and show how to customize and maybe even build your own kind of conky uh, design. Because... This is neat. It really is, but man, I tell you, this is for as an initial impression, let's just say I thought it would be a little more standardized. Just, just a little. Just a little. But uh hey. 
Yeah. Is it hot in server rooms? Yeah, it's deafening for the loudness of it. Hot, usually not. Actually, uh, the, the server racks themselves are usually putting out a ton of heat, but they're vented, and a lot of times they're sucking all the hot air out of them, and all the cool air is coming up from underneath. So it's actually really, really cool in a data center for most times. But, hey, it just depends. Yeah, I might do the whole make your own conky desktop in uh, a little bit. But I kind of want to standardize some certain things. I'll see what I can put together for everyone to make it to where you can kind of put together some packages at least. So you can use, I, I want to use the GUI even though it's depreciated. Just because when you're doing a lot of the text edits and doing micro edits on that text file and saying... I need to go five pixels up or five pixels over, save it, reload. I mean, that just kind of sucks. That's why the manager's just so nice. Um, and yeah, you can drag and drop it into the other half of the screen and do those micro edits, but again, a hacky solution. <laughs> uh, uh, the legit, dude, use Windows, it's great. Yeah, I think we all know how much I love Windows. It's amazing. And I wouldn't have a career if people didn't use Windows, so I should be thankful a lot of people use Windows. Because, you know, if I think ever the world used Linux, once you get Linux set up, it would just work. Think how boring your job would be. Not, oh my God, what broke now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, could you please do a video about steam integrating retro arch oh yeah i heard about that i heard about uh the whole steam doing retro arch and that's pretty sweet i kind of kind of dig it but at the same time retro arch is a little funky like i don't know if anybody's used retro arch a lot but without a controller, it's really weird to use. And uh, I'm curious to see. I need, I need to load up on my Steam and see how it plays because I've always used it independently. Or using like uh, RetroArch, which is a, a RetroArch or RetroPie on uh, just setting up Raspberry Pis and connecting controllers. It's super awesome. I absolutely love uh, my RetroPie where I would set it up with using that project. That is such a clean setup in probably the best use of a Raspberry Pi out there. I absolutely love it, so. But with that, guys, I'm probably gonna go ahead and shut it down. Um, I just kinda wanna try Conky, pop in here, do a surprise stream. I know nobody was expecting a stream today. I just kinda wanted to do it once during the day just so everyone can kinda see how the stream Streaming quality goes. I kind of want to look back through, see how the audio was and all the things, and then maybe put together more of a structured stream. But for this, I thought, hey, why not learn Conky while doing the test on the stream? It was a lot of fun. Um, I do stream a lot on Twitch, probably a little bit more, more on Twitch than YouTube just because of content filter, um, certain things that I really don't like uh, when it comes to YouTube and streaming. So that's why a lot of my streams come through Twitch instead of YouTube. That And it's a little more personal on Twitch where I'm able to not get quite a big audience and I can catch a lot more of the questions that happen. Because on here, it just kind of scrolls and by the time I look up, I'm just like, oh Lord, I missed like 10 questions. <laughs> where on uh, Twitch, it's a little easier because usually it's only about 30 to 40 people. So it's not, not too bad on Twitch. And that's uh, kind of a neat, and I like the utilities on Twitch a lot better. Streaming on Twitch is a lot less cumbersome with the chat integration and a lot of other streaming tools. So that's why I do it on Twitch sometimes, especially if I'm playing any games, because any game I've ever played on YouTube, I've gotten struck with a content ID filter almost immediately afterwards. <laughs> so that's why I don't really do it. That and I can uh, just kind of let loose a little bit more on Twitch, but... That's why I do both, and I still will stream on YouTube as well. It's not like I don't like streaming on YouTube. It's just it depends on what content I'm presenting and a lot of content uh, for 
Twitch is more gaming content, where here I like to do more tutorial-based content and things directly on YouTube. So it, it does vary, and that's why I stream on both. A lot of people are like, what the hell, man? Why do you stream on both? And that's really the rationale behind it. But if you guys have anything, again, feel free to leave it in the comments below, or you can get on the Discord channel. Um, you can go to christitus.com forward slash Discord and check me out on Discord. You can hit me up in uh, direct messages there or on Twitter. I'm pretty much everywhere. You can pretty much reach me, however. Um, it's just sometimes I get a little overwhelmed and I got a lot of stuff going on, so I may not respond right away. Don't take it as a slight that I'm ignoring you. It's just... Sometimes I just uh, have a lot of stuff on my plate and I just can't get uh, and answer every question out there, but I will try my best. So definitely hit me up. I, I really enjoy uh, teaching people, especially coming back into from Windows to Linux. I really try and cater to that type of user because I see a lot more of that. And I have a couple more videos coming out specifically tailored toward that where uh, gaming on Linux is not only getting better, but it's getting better than Windows. A lot of people say, hey, I don't wanna take a 20% FPS hit to game on Linux. Guess what? That is soon gonna be a thing of the past. And not only will you not take an FPS hit, pretty soon, Linux gaming will outperform Windows gaming, even on Windows games. That's how insane it is. So I just wanna just throw that out there and, uh, I have a video coming out about that. I'm sure I'm going to get roasted in it. But at the same time, it's the truth. It's That's happening. A lot of people say, oh, no, no, no. You, no, no. I mean, it's, it's there. You should see a lot of the stuff coming out with the compilers, with Steam's releasing, and, and Valve's developed with AOC. It's some crazy, crazy powerful stuff. And, uh, man, it's going to be huge. It's just going to be huge. But thank you guys so much. You're awesome. And thank you so much for the support. Absolutely love it. Again, any question, even if it's a Windows question, I don't care. Uh, you can hit me up. I, I always love answering all those questions and seeing all the problems that people have because it also helps me become a better uh, creator and make better videos because I know what issues people are encountering. So even though I may not answer your question, you may see a video come out based on your question. So that has happened many times in the past as well. So thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next stream.